Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part time musician who wants to go full time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. On the Profitable Musician Show, we give you practical tips and strategies to increase the income you're already making and tap into new streams so you can create more diverse, stable, reliable income from music and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. We also help you think like a business owner so you can keep more of the money that you make. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, author of the best-selling book, The Musician's Profit Path, and host of the popular Profitable Musician Summit. And as you can probably tell, I am obsessed with helping musicians like you to build a rock solid fan base and income foundation so you can fund the music you are driven to create, share your message with the world, and fulfill your God-given purpose as a musician without stressing out about where your next dollar is gonna come from. You've got the talent. You just need the marketing and business tools to take it to the next level. Now let's dive in to The Profitable Musician Show. Hello and welcome to The Profitable Musician Show. I am so excited to be here with my friend Suze Polinski from The Rockstar Advocate and we are going to talk all things productivity. We are on the cusp of 2021 right now. So whether you're watching this in a timely manner manner, right before we start 2021 or you're further into the year, I think this will be really helpful in helping you as a musician to figure out ways to be more organized and productive, even in these difficult circumstances. So with that, um, I first just want to have Suze introduce herself a little bit, give you a little bit of background on why she loves to help musicians with productivity, and then we'll get into all the juicy stuff about how we can apply these productivity principles to our lives. Great. Well, thanks so much for having me. Um, as Bree said, my name is Suze. I'm the founder of the Rockstar Advocate. I've been in the music business a little over 18 years, probably closer to 20, but who's counting? Um, and <laughs> I started the Rockstar Advocate a little over six years ago because I myself working at the major labels in New York and starting my own businesses that ne never really got off the ground uh, the way that I wanted them to, um, I burnt out real fast. And um, in my late 20s, I contracted Lyme disease. And it is a chronic version of it. It's a very potent <laughs> version of it. And um, I wasn't able to work on growing my business the way I had wanted to. And so I was feeling it was... 2013, I was feeling super bummed out and um, just kind of took a break from the whole thing. And in 2014, I finally decided, you know what, I got to stop feeling sorry for myself. I got to get back in the game, figure out what I want to do. And so I hired a business coach who was not in the music industry and they had taught me all these productivity things that I could do to, you know, make the most of the time that I can work when I wasn't sick in bed and I was like you're crazy like we work 24 7 in the music industry this is not going to work um but I really had no choice that was really you know I had the time that I had and I was paying this coach a lot of money <laughs> and so I was like you know what I'm gonna just trust I'm just gonna put my trust in them put my trust in myself and I'm gonna make it happen and within six months, my business was full time and I haven't looked back since. So, you know, I really just working with them in the three months that I worked with them and we're figuring out, well, what can my business be? What, how can I serve people? I realized what they were teaching me was what I needed to teach musicians. I realized that understanding that I could work four hours in a day and get more done than when I worked 16 hours at the label, um, I realized, wow, okay, I need to really trust this counterintuitive productivity behavior um, and really help musicians and other music professionals realize that we don't have to burn out um, and that we don't have to sleep when we're dead and sleep shame each other and all of this stuff. So that's really where the Rockstar Advocate came to be. And so I help music professionals of all kinds and other creatives um, 
really get clear on what their goals are, really cut through the BS and the white noise, get to what their priorities are and figure out when they're going to make time for those priorities and then set up steps to get it done. So that's, that's really what the Rockstar Advocate is all about. So I'm curious, why do you think when you were at the label, why didn't they employ these kind of productivity? I mean, you know, if they're smart business people, they don't want their employees to burn out. So right. why, why aren't they doing this? Because honestly, back then, and, and, and this was really an interesting time, I started at the labels when, back in the very early aughts when um, iTunes was coming out with digital downloads, and this was all like, oh my goodness, what do you mean? CDs aren't selling the way they used to. And, you know, they were kind of in a panic. And, you know, they were so focused on the bottom line. You know, they were so mm -hmm. focused on, well, we can't let sales slip. And so, the honestly, the the environment at the labels was you either do the work or if you don't want to do it, there's a line around the corner of people dying to get into the music industry. And so we'll just replace you. And in fact, when wow. I quit, in fact, I quit five times. I just kept showing back up because they kept threatening that, you know, I wasn't going to have a future in this business and that I'd regret it. And so I kept coming back the next day after I quit. Um, but when I finally did leave, I actually, and I built, I wish the person before me did this, but I built literally like a 20 page manual for whoever they were going to train to take my spot. And in fact, they hired the intern because I had also had to train all the interns at the company. They actually put one of the interns in my spot in like a 16 hour day full, yeah, I had my own office. I was the Midwest sales coordinator for an entire section of states in the United States they gave it to an intern and he stayed on as an intern for eight months in my position. Uh, oh. So they did not pay him. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they eventually hired him. Um, but it like, that was the mentality at the labels. It was like, we'll fill your spot. We'll make it work. Um, luckily many of them are changing. In fact, just a couple of years ago, I started working with BMG and um, talking to their employees about burnout and, you know, the, I have noticed a lot of the bigger labels are putting more self-care and, and turning those tables. And, and, and I do, you know, I look to people like Ariana Huffington. I think her and her Thrive community from Huffington Post really helped get the conversation out there for these bigger corporations. So things are changing <laughs> back in the early 2000s. That was not the case. <laughs> Oh gosh, thank goodness to hear that they're changing. That's that's horrible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um so I think the challenge for artists, right, is that we do have to do all the things that a label does as an artist and it's just us. So if they're burning out people at the label and they've got all <laughs> these departments and stuff, you know, how can we how can we really think that we could do all the things that we need to do as an artist in all, wear all these hats of the label and still do it in four hours a day? Yeah, <laughs> right. So that's a really great question. And so a couple of things to keep in mind, you know, as you pointed out, the labels really weren't working very smart <laughs> mm -hmm. and they weren't really thinking about, you know, they're, we say all the time, like how long it's taken and it's still taking these labels time to figure out that like people aren't really buying CDs like there you can have your niche community I've seen independent artists I mean look at Leah McHenry and and there's plenty of artists and Brie like yourself I'm sure you there are still CDs that get sold um, and those are your super fans and those are the people that love the tangible thing but as a whole as a if, if you look at just you know the global sales reports streaming and digital downloads and in fact more so streaming now is is really how consumers are taking in new music and not so much the CD sales, certainly not the way they were in the 90s. Um, so the labels are still dragging their feet and refusing to, um, to look at new models and new ways of doing things on, as, on the larger scale. Luckily, independent musicians and having coaches like yourself who teach these better strategies for building, um, you know, building careers, they're more adaptable and more um, willing to change and go with the time. So independent artists really do have a leg up because even though you are wearing more hats and there's 
more to do, so to speak, you can adapt much more quickly than a larger corporation can. So will you always be working four hours a day? No, if you're getting ready to launch an album or a single, there might be some days where maybe you do pull an all-nighter or maybe you are working a bit more because there's all these tiny little things to do that are very time specific. However, we want to get away from the constant. I mean, I was working 16, 17 hour days at the office every single day, oh. month after month, week after week. And like that isn't sustainable. So we avoid burnout by making the all nighters or the more longer days at the office rare and only for certain occasions. And the more regular days are, you know, four to six hour days. And then that's it. And, you know, sometimes, especially if you're working a day job, I have clients who are, are you know, transitioning out of their day job. And sometimes they only have one hour a day after they get home from a day job and they have kids and they have other things to do. But that one hour is super intentional and they are super focused on what is going to move the needle and the other stuff can wait. So I think that's really the key. Yeah. Oh, I, I so agree with that. And I just got through with this boot camp that I did called Get More Done in Less Time. And it is all about that. Like people only have so many hours per day to work on music, especially if they have a job, they have kids, especially right now when they're probably having to supervise homeschool. They're, um, you know, they take care of, of aging parents. You know, you've got all these responsibilities on your plate. Not everybody can spend all their time working on music. So I help them figure out, you know, how many hours per week do they actually have and how can we make these the most fruitful hours? So I know this is like kind of a big question and like a long process, I'm sure, but can you break it down a little bit how musicians can figure out what are the things that are going to move the needle with that one hour a day? Sure. So first it starts with getting super clear on your goal and why that is your goal. And Brie, I'm sure you've come across this too. I'll have clients come and say, well, my goal is to get signed by a label. And then I'll say, well, why? And they're like, I don't know. I just thought that's what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'll say, well, that's not the only path. Um, and so, you know, again, I always tell people it's not a wrong goal, to kind of want to get signed by label, but it's also not a goal. It's kind of like a byproduct that happens from mm -hmm. the work that you're doing. So, you know, you don't, you don't get a record deal by sitting there chasing labels. You get a record deal by, by making so much noise out there that they're chasing you down. Um, so I always say like, make sure you understand the purpose and intention of your goal. Like, why is that your goal? Why is it important to you? Why are you going to, use like you said if you have a day job and if you're homeschooling kids at home like why are you going to then stay up the extra hour to put in this work like why does this matter to you because when we know why it matters to us then on the days that it does get really hard we're more motivated to do it and when we know why the goal is important we're more we can more easily pick out what matters about that goal so for instance if you know like well I'm, I want to release a single, you know, January 15th. And like, that's, that's my goal. Okay. Well, why? Well, I'm really proud of this song. I think it could have a real impact. The message is important. This is the message. Okay. So what are the components that are important to it? Like, why, why does this matter? How are people going to digest it? Well, I want to grow my Spotify and I want them to, you know, follow me on Spotify, add, add me to their playlists and I want to, my goal is X amount of streams by this date. Okay, well, what needs to happen? Then you just start reverse engineering it. Mm -hmm. And so you start breaking it down. Well, if I want to be on Spotify, how do I have to get there? Who's my dis distributor? Is it TuneCore? Is it CD Baby? Is it, you know, DistroKid? And then how much time do they need from me in order to get it up on Spotify by the time I do that? I've heard about pre-save campaigns. What's that about? How much <laughs> time do I need to do that? And then you might realize, wow, if I'm just getting started with this January 15th might not work. Maybe I have to push it back, you know, so you have to pick a goal, understand that you might tweak it and change it. You probably will. And then reverse engineer it and work backwards so that not only do you know the sequences, you know, you figure out what steps have to come first 
And so many people will say to me, well, I, I don't know what comes first. Right, but start with what, what you do know. And then ask questions if you need to, do some Google searching, figure out what components make up the step that you do know, and then keep breaking it down. And before you know it, you will know what the first step is because it's just process of elimination and it's just, you know, breaking it down so minutely that it's like, oh, this is where I start. And so then if you only have one hour a day, that hour should be whatever that very next step is. And if you get that done, move on to the next one, move on to the next one. And that's really the most basic way to, to answer that question. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I know there's a lot of things involved, yeah. but like, I love that reverse engineering idea. And I love that you said that when you figure out all the steps, you might have to change your goal. Because I think sometimes people are like, they get so obsessed with the specific date, especially when releasing things. Like I've decided I'm releasing it this, the 15th of January. That's just, that's happening, you know? And, and when they realize that they really need like three months, mm -hmm. sometimes they dig their heels in and they're like, no, I'm, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to get all this done. And then they're not going to get it done because that's impossible. And then they're going to have all these regrets because they're still going to release it on January 15th, but they're not going to do it properly. Right. And that's a big thing that I talk about in my, my Rock Your Next Release course is that like, you guys, like, the, you know, it's a big deal to release a song or an album and you put a lot of work into it. You, you need to make sure that you've got the time to actually execute on everything that you want to because otherwise you're going to come out on the other side of it and be like I should have done all these other things so I would definitely encourage people you don't don't dig your heels in when you come up with a goal and then you realize that maybe it's not as attainable as you thought within that amount of time it's okay to change it and I know some people don't want to change it because they're like but I haven't met my goals before and this time I'm finally going to do it, you know, cause they like haven't been yep. goal setters. Yep. I love that. You know, I, I love that you said, don't, you know, don't get too attached to it because it's like, I always say, get attached to the why mm -hmm. don't get attached to the goal itself because the goal is going to be tweaked. It might look different than you thought. It might come at a different time than you thought, but the why that's why we want to focus on attaching a why to a goal that for the most part is really never going to change because that's what impassions you. That's what motivates you to work towards this goal. So get attached to the why, but know that the vehicle that might come in might look a little bit different and that's okay. And, and I think as you said, when, when clients say, well, but I haven't reached my goals before. It's so important that I make this one happen. <laughs> yeah, you're going to make the why happen. You're going to, you're going to change the deadline but the impact is going to be what you want it to be. And that's what matters. Like that's what you want to accomplish, not the deadline. We don't, we don't need to accomplish deadlines. Like that doesn't mm -hmm. give us our, it doesn't define our value. It doesn't make us failures if we move a deadline or if we miss a deadline. It, it just means that's how life worked out. And that has no, that is no, it doesn't define who you are. Yep. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And speaking of that, I think that really moves well into this thing that I wanted to ask was, did you see a lot of people having to change their goals this year because of the pandemic and what happened? And, you know, was it hard for them to give up on things that they they'd wanted and how were they able to shift their why to something new? Yeah, such a great question. I mean, my, my myself included, you know, I look back at my notes from January. <laughs> yeah, you just kind of laugh, right? Right. I mean, it's like, okay, that was cute that I thought that was going to happen. <laughs> it didn't. Um, but again, and, and there is like a little ping that happens where you're like, oh, that hurts. Like how I was so wrong on that. Why? Because we weren't psychics about a pandemic happening or we weren't psychics about how the pandemic was going to affect us emotionally, physically, mentally, how it was going to affect loved ones. You know, there you we are not in a bubble. I mean, it feels like that now that we're in lockdown, but <laughs> <laughs> you do not exist. You and your plan do not exist in a bubble. You are in a web of family and friends, of fans, of the ecosystem. I mean, like, we are all connected. So of technology. Yeah, totally. Right. 
So if one thing's happening over here and you're connected to it, guess what? It's going to affect your plan and you don't have control over that. And so, you know, I think it's important to not only accept that things can change, but also, listen, I mean, I've had clients that had their whole year mapped out of, of you know, financially where they're like, we're going on this tour. I mean, I know a band who ran this incredible crowdfunding campaign over the holidays of last year and it was going to like that money was going to put them through a whole spring and summer tour. And then they were like, Oh God. And now what do we do? And now people have given us this money and Oh my goodness. And listen, when it's that big of a thing that changes, even if it's a smaller thing, it's okay to grieve that loss. It is a loss and it is okay to give yourself time to grieve, to give yourself time to process it and say, wow, my, you know, there are some people out there whose entire livelihoods have shifted because of this. There are people who have gotten furloughed or let go or miss, you know, had to say no to opportunities or those opportunities said no to them because of this pandemic. Okay, take a moment, acknowledge that, grieve it. But then, you know, like I always say, have your 15 minute pity party, but then, okay, what can I do now? And um, Jack Foreman, um, from Bicoastal Productions, he, uh, we, I did an interview with him on my podcast a couple months ago, right at the beginning of the pandemic. And he said, you know, we're creatives. So get creative with the solution, challenge yourself to say, you know, I'm not just creative. My only gift is not being creative musically. My gift is being a creative. So let's get creative on a solution. What can you do? What can you offer? What can you give your fans? How can you pivot? And so I think it's important to stay loose. And as you said, don't get so attached to the goal that when that goal has to change or disappear, your, your career has disappeared. Like your career is still here. It just looks different and that's okay. Yeah. I mean, if, you're, if your why is that you want to serve your fans and give them amazing content, it, it might not be able to be in person, but you can still do those things, right? They'll just look different. Yeah, absolutely. So for the coming year in 2021, as we have these challenges, but we don't exactly know what it's going to look like because we don't know when things are going to open up again, how do we even go about trying to figure out what our goals should be for next year? Yeah, I think it's really important to, I'm a big visualizer. I, mm. I love um, vision boards. I wasn't always, I was usually the person like, okay, <laughs> like Susie Crafty wants to make a vision board, like whatever. But I, you know, I really started to fall in love with it um, after working with some coaches and, you know, really they turned me on to digital vision boards. As much as I'm a pen to paper person, digital vision boards, um, have I think the, that's what I need because I, I'm not crafty either. And I, I had the exact same reaction that you did about vision boards. Like I hate cutting things out of magazine, right. you know? Right. It's never going to look good. It looks like a suicide, like a, a serial rapist or serial killer's <laughs> note. Oh my gosh. And I'm done with it. Like it just never looks like inspirational. It just looks scary yeah. um so and another thing my coach had had taught me was that also when you do it with magazines and everything you're limiting and you're forcing your vision to fit whatever is in those magazines that's true and when you do a digital one you can create something on canva you can do a google search about billions of images and find things that fit what you see um and another thing i like about digital vision boards is it also enables you to um, make it your desktop background. <sighs> and ever since I've been doing, when I first started doing this in 2018, it was a game changer mm. because some days I wasn't focused on it. I was going about stuff, life distracted me, whatever, but I was seeing it every day. And then a few months went by and I looked at it again and I realized, oh my gosh, I've already started to cross things off this vision board because I was seeing it every day and it, it it's like subconscious, right? Right. Yeah. right. It's in your psyche. And then when opportunities come by, you know, this is really the whole law of attraction thing. And they've done psychological studies on this. Really all it means is when you are so clear visually about what it is you're going for, 
when opportunities come, you more easily see, oh, that opportunity, it might be great, but that doesn't really fit with where I'm going. Okay, no, thank you. And so you get distracted less by everything that's coming at you. Um, and when you, you know, rather than trying to fit it into a specific, uh, what you think it should look like, when you know what you want it to look like, you actually open yourself to seeing things that you might have had blinders on before. Mm. When you allow to go after stuff the way you want it to look rather than the way you think it should look, you actually open yourself up to a lot of opportunities that you might have missed. So I do it every year since 2018. It is a game changer. Every Even in 2019, my life got turned tipsy-turvy upside down. Nothing went as planned. And yet still somehow by the end of 2019, everything but maybe one thing was crossed off my vision board. Wow. And I was like, I didn't even realize that that was happening. <laughs> like, I didn't even realize I was meeting my goals. It just came out differently. That you know, it, it happened differently than I, I expected it to. But the goals that I wanted, the things I had wanted to attract still came like exactly how I had wanted them in the end. Um, so it's, it's really a game changer. And um, on my, I have a page on my website. It's totally free. And it's a tutorial page that I've made for people with the planner, but you don't need my planner. If you don't have it, you can still get value out of this page because I have a 2021 vision board template. It's a free Canva template that you can access and create your own vision board, put it on your desktop and um, even resize it and put it on, you know, your phone, the wallpaper on your phone. Mm. Um, and it's, it's really, um, it's fun and, and I walk you through how to do it. So um, if you want to um, go to my page, I'll make sure Brie has the link. Um, you can uh, go there and, and just access the free, tu free tutorial, free template and have fun with it. That's really cool. I, I'm going to have to check that out because I have been very resistant to vision boards because of the <laughs> I totally nature feel of them that I thought was weird. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's talk about your planner because I, I mean, you've went, since you came out with this, was it 2018 when you came out with it? 2016. Gosh, it was that far along. Wow. That's amazing. I think that was it, like really the first time I ever met you and knew about yeah. you way back then. Yeah. But um, gosh, it's, it's really become like, I think kind of a standard in the music industry of mm -hmm. things, a thing that people use to help stay focused. And it's interesting because we're like two sides of a coin. I am a totally digital planner. I plan everything with Google Docs and with Asana and things like that, um, just because I'm not a visual person. So I don't, and you know, with I have like a little bit low vision, so it's harder for me to do things on paper. So I never, you know, talk about these things to my students, but I know that a lot of them are that kind of person. They are like the tactile learner that needs to like use highlighters and, and things like that, that your planner serves. So can you talk a little bit about like, why is this planner specific toward musicians? What, what is it? How does it gear specific toward musicians? And also like, what does the actual physical act of using a planner do that digital planning doesn't? Sure. Um, so this is this is actually the 2020 planner because <laughs> I was actually sitting here plan <laughs> looking at my week and, and reflecting. Um, but it's the, the 2021 planner looks exactly the same, just a, a different color cover. Um, but what I love about the physical planner is, and I totally hear you. I think every, everybody has to go with their preference and what, what works best for them because you're the one carrying out the plan. <laughs> right. So, Plan however feels good. Um, why I decided to go with a physical planner is because um, uh, many studies have shown that we reach our goals faster if we write them down. And the reason behind that is, I think about it this way, when you're typing, you know, all the keys feel the same. So mm -hmm. you know visually like what letters you're hitting, but your muscles only feel the tapping. When we write, and so what the studies have found is that when you write your muscles, the way they're forming the letters, the way they're writing things down or even drawing them out, it actually um, kind of stays in your brain much more specifically, much more in a, in a deeper way. Um, so again, much like doing a vision board, your brain is processing the goal on a deeper level. 
or mm-hmm. anything that you're writing on a deeper level. And what I like about it is that it forces us to, and, and another thing that the studies have also said is because when you're writing, you're going slower than most of us if we type pretty fast and we're just kind of going out. When you're writing letter by letter and you're doing it, you're slowing it down and you're actually processing what it is you're writing a little bit better. So when you write stuff down, um, you also, for me, I just find it, you know, crossing things off like that, that feeling of just like, yep, I did that. Yep. I can move on to the next thing. Like I get gratification of just crossing things off. Um, I agree. I have to live with the gratification of clicking the check. Right. Clicking the, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> clicking the check box. And I do too. I, I keep, I keep my running master list of tasks in Airtable. Um, I keep my Google calendar with all my appointments. So I very much appreciate the digital components when I'm planning it and I'm figuring out what is going to go on those things. Um, I use the planner. So, which is why, you know, for instance, we didn't make, as you can see in one of the things, like we didn't make the, the boxes very big. Um, they're small. They're really just meant to get your main thoughts out here, your main points of what you are going to focus on each day. Um, and then we have the prompts on the opposite page of, well, what was your highlight from last week? You know, we, we very intentionally put certain reflective prompts and certain planning prompts in there for what was your highlight from last week? What is the self-care going to be specifically this week? How are you going to take care of yourself this week? What are those things? Is it reading a book for pleasure? Is it taking a nap? Is it having fun with your friends, maybe now virtually doing a Zoom call? Is it, you know, taking a hot bath? So what are the things specifically that you're going to do? And then you go on the next page and you specifically write out when you're going to do those things. So what we've started to implement also for those like yourself who like to really be on the computer and do it digitally, we've added a couple of new things this year that I'm really excited about. So recently we started a private community on Instagram, which is new. (laughs) Usually the communities are on Facebook, but I just, I just, um, I just can't do Facebook. I know you're an Instagram girl. (laughs) So I created a, a private page on Instagram and it's really cool how we've kind of gotten around the limitations of Instagram. Um, and people can tag us since they can't post in the group, they just tag us. And then when they have something to say on their page, which enables them to actually be creating content for their own page, we're able to share it and repost it or share it in our stories um, Mm -hmm. or share it in our feed. Um, We encourage you and we we guide you on how to do introductions. So you're posting introductions on your Instagram page, what you should be doing about once a month anyway for your new followers. And then we share it and save it in a highlight so that we can like grow. We have like a whole highlight of of the people in our community. Um, We also do weekly planning calls. So every Monday on Instagram Live, you're um, being able to hop on and plan your week with us. And I do this with my Rockstar Slackers as well. So we've brought in the, the planning community on Instagram as well to join us. And we plan the week and we guide you through your planner. Um, so all you need to join this community is have any version of the planner. Some people that have the 2016 version are in there and people oh. that have the 2021 version, any version of the planner, you're welcome to be a part of the community and join us. And so in addition to that, the reason to get to your question about why is this specific to musicians, it's really specific to any creative, but we do, there are kind of specific things in there for musicians. We have guiding you through what you're going, what you're going to do with your newsletter. So what is your newsletter topic going to be? What was the conversion rate of your last newsletter? What was the open rate and the click rate? Oh, um, I love that. The marketing nerd in me is getting excited. Right? About that. <laughs> <laughs> we also have sections for your ads. So for um, fan base engagement. So what was the ad conversion? What, how much did you spend? Stuff like that. Um, so we have things in there. And then in the back of the book, and we keep adding to this all the time. On the last page in the book, we have a whole, I have to cover the, the passcode, but we have a whole list of templates and checklists that you can download 
from a private page that you get a passcode in when you get the book and we're always adding to it. So there are things like crowdfunding workbook for tips on building your crowdfunding campaign. There's performance checklist, even for live streaming. What do you need to keep in mind when you prepare for a performance, a split sheet agreement for all my, my songwriters out there. What do you need for a split sheet agreement? All these things are free to download. Um, off of the the private web web page so there's endless amounts financial workbooks spreadsheets in there as well so all free to download to help you get your systems together so we're really excited about all the new features we've added so that is cool so you really are kind of covering the the physical and the digital with yeah. that that's, yeah, that's we fantastic. yeah we really worked hard to make sure that we're we're kind of covering both bases because people in the past it's been interesting. People used to say, "Well, when are you creating the app? I want the app. Like, I need an app." And we said, "Okay, well, do the book first and let let us know what you think." And it's interesting. Once people use the book, they actually don't want an app. Like we, <laughs> we went back and surveyed them, and they're like, "No, no, no, I like it now. I'll I'll, I'll use the book." So what we did do this year for the first time is we do have a digital planner, but it's a print at home planner. Mm -hmm. So if you rather not, it, it is free shipping within the United States, but if you're international and don't want to pay international shipping, or if you just kind of want to go through the planner and print as you go, some people like to make their own binders and get like real wow. creative with it, then you can um, purchase the digital planner at a lower price and just print it as you go. Um, and that that's a new option that we have for this year. Mm. Wow, that's awesome. Well, if people are getting excited about the planner, you definitely want to go over to her site and check that out, especially if you're watching this right now when we're about to start 2021. And this is the time that you really need to get organized and start figuring out how your systems for how you're going to be achieving your goals in the next year. You can go over to the rockstaradvocate.com, check out the planner. We She's given us an awesome 20% coupon. So if you can uh, just type BREE20, B-R-E-E-2-0, -E all capital letters, and you will get a 20% discount on the planner um, for a limited time. So definitely go, go do that right away if you want to grab the planner. And you're going to need it right away anyway, because if you want to make the most of the year for the planner, definitely go do that. Is there anything else you want to let them know about it when they go to the page or... Um, yeah, so you'll see there when you when you go to the planner page, we also have a brand new list of um, accessories. So your coupon is good for even if you don't buy the planner and just want the accessories. We've got monthly sticker tabs. We have um, mindset stickers. As you can see, I've already started using mine, but um, fun little colorful stickers to plan out your launch or to just keep you motivated. Um, and, and yes, so some of them are a little naughty, um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but if you'd like any of the different accessories, your, your discount code works for that as well. And I just want to say, Bree, thank you so much for, for having me because I just, I'm such a fan of all you do. And, and I'm just so happy to be able to, to share this with your audience. Absolutely. I mean, we're, we both really believe in productivity and goal setting, and I'm glad that we can, you know, work together as much as possible to help musicians be able to just do more and get more of their stuff out into the world because yeah. we don't want you guys holding back your creativity because you're overwhelmed or you don't know what steps to take or you just feel like every time you set a goal, you fail at achieving it. We want you to be able to connect to your why and, and get your stuff out there in the world. So um, we are working together to make sure that happens for as many musicians as possible. So if they want to connect with you on social, I know you're on Instagram. So where's the best <laughs> place for them to find you on Instagram? Yes, Rockstar Advo. D, uh, it's Rockstar A-D-V-O. Um, DM me at any time. If you have any questions whatsoever, I'm happy to address them. And um, yeah, that's that's where you can find me pretty much all the time. <laughs> all the time. Yeah, check out her Instagram live. She's always doing Instagram <laughs> lives on there. Which we are... gotta have you on. I know, yeah. I know. Last time we did, I remember trying to get on there and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a tech hiccup because I am not used to Instagram Live, but it was good. Now I'm learning. 
I'm, I'm a yeah, face. We'll, we'll get person, you there. So. You have, you have so much to share. I know this podcast is amazing, and so the the Instagram gods need to know about all of this. <laughs> We're working on it. We're working on it. I am such a Facebook person, just because I've I've been entrenched there for so long. You know what I yeah. mean? But I know, I know. Got to get more on the Instagram. So. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing all of your knowledge and giving us that awesome coupon. And I really hope many of you take advantage of it today. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to The Profitable Musician Show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at rondifay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician.